Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. And then really, like, Rubik then just sort of forgets about trying to steal from the Lina, realizing it's not worthwhile whatsoever. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I suppose still getting the Laguna, Laguna Blade can be nice. But mm -hmm. it all depends if we can. But, hey, there is a spell which is much more better to steal. Yes. You know, taking away that Doom. And we've seen it again and again in the past. Like, Rubik's always able to get this skill. It's pretty easy to take away. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it can be devastating when it happens. Yeah, the Doom rarely jumps on you. Mm. And all of his other spells that he can use to cover for that Doom have such a long wind-up time. Doom is a very... I guess he's a very showy guy, right? He likes to wave his arms around a lot before he casts anything. That he does. So. Yep. He'll get that shot. Yeah, he'll try so fourth pick now to come out for spawn team uh i'm sure it's gonna be their next support and which one are they gonna go with as ah, a hoodwink mm -hmm. okay very cool definitely something we don't see all too often but then they just does it respond by going for the templar assassin <clears throat> yeah. one of the classic lena counter picks mm -hmm. and you're protected versus her first couple of hits with your refraction of course and then you are extraordinarily good at dealing uh, pure physical burst damage, which is something that Delina itemizes against mostly versus like magic damage, magic disable. She gets that BKB early, but she's not actually very tanky and she relies on her own physical burst damage to keep mm -hmm. possible assailants away. Just I have more damage than you. Templar Assassin will usually get that blink off and will always win the, the mano a mano. She is on top of her. Yeah, I think, I think in that regard, there's going to be a fair amount of pressure on the clockwork to like try and get that sort of counter initiation hook shot in, make the space for the Lena to you know get some distance between her and the the Templar assassin, and then yeah, like I said, she can start actually dealing damage herself. But yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tricky one for sure. Um, so yeah, it it is the mid laner left here for spawn team. Um, I mean, obviously, there is a chance there's a bit of flexibility for both Lena and Doom to go mid, but it does seem mm -hmm. quite likely that, you know, the Lena will just be the carry, Doom be the off. So we'll see what they go for. What, what sort of hero springs to mind when you want a good matchup versus a TA? Versus TA, I mean, the, the Viper is the one that first comes to mind, right? But that has been taken out a long time ago. There goes the Bat Rider as well. Mm -hmm. Let's see. On what we have uh, left here, I mean, you could you could Huskar, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely could actually. It's pretty, uh, pretty good. I'm having a giggle, but also not really. I mean, again, like the Huskar will do well with the versus the TA, and you also have no spells that a Rubik really wants to steal again. So you sort of end up mess up the Rubik's game a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. You can, like, when you use your burst, you can push away the Primal Beasts when it gets on top of you, but, yeah. Instead, they will just go for the Ember Spirit. Hey, we got we got the fire bit right, you know? That's mm. that's the main bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, Ember Spirit, not too... Like, you're not too happy versus the TA. She's definitely going to have a better lane than you. Uh, you're going to be looking to rotate, and she's going to be looking to farm, and which means that she gets that farm out. There's no pressure on the tower to deal with or anything. Your flame guard is nice to burn away refraction charges later on, though. So, it's not all bad. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, like you say, it definitely seems like more of a... Like, you address the TA, but yeah, in like the mid to sort of later parts of the game. Early parts, TA's going to be doing whatever the hell whatever the hell she wants. Um, and you just know as well, whenever there's a TA, there's going to be a lot of stacks being made in the triangle that she can go up and farm. Um, mm -hmm. And spawn team don't really have many ways to steal away that farm. Uh, there's Prophet. Ah, okay. Uh, so, uh, Death Prophet clowns on Ember Spirit. Yeah. Rocking out the mid, then leaving the TA then to be the carry themselves. Yeah, but I don't actually think... Wait, no, it is JG. Yeah, no, it is JG. So they are going to do exactly that. And man, I wanted Mamangdaya to have a playmaker. Mamangdaya got a playmaker. And the, the Death Prophet is just still in. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see why they didn't uh, decide to ban that one out. But hey, Zerge will find that opening in the draft and easily able to pick that one up. Uh, so, like, how, how much worse is a Death Prophet for an Ember Spirit compared to the TA? Is it, like, twice as bad or just a little bit more? No, definitely twice as bad. Yeah. 
you don't actually push out the wave fast enough. You're a melee hero for up versus the siphons, which is also really uncomfortable. And then, of course, when when you go out to gank, like this is not a hero that goes back into the uh, into the jungle to farm up, but this is a hero that's just going to take your tower as soon as you know about. And then the silence later on. Ember Spirit does not want to have to build um, any like items to deal with that early on. The Yule Spirit Ember is long in the past, and we're not going to go back to that. Uh, but that just means that he's going to have his trigger finger at the ready for the entirety of uh, of the early game until he has like a BKB up, because otherwise you're just going to get silence and you you fall over immediately. Yeah, well, it's, it's not really something that you want from your mid lane. Like they're meant to be there to make space for the carry, but if they're also having to uh, spend time to get their own farm on the line, then it just creates more openings that Zerja could potentially uh, you know use their advantage and and bully out the a dominant lead. We we'll obviously see how the game ends up panning out, but uh, who, who you, what team are you feeling more comfortable on? You going for the Zersha draft? I am definitely going for the Zersha draft, yeah. They have two ways to get on top of the Lina. They have a TA who looks pretty much geared up to have a good game and are going to be shutting the enemy playmaker down. This looks pretty solid as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it definitely does seem like they, uh, they've managed to tick the majority of the boxes. Gonna be able to like deal with the Lina, deal with the Ember Spirit. So it, I guess it all depends if the Doom can sort of pick up the slack for mm -hmm. the rest of the team, have a good lane, and yeah, maybe start building up some momentum for them. But uh, yeah, it all just does come down to how Red's feeling. Obviously, he's had kind of a rough time in the other series. He's never really had a decent lane. Was you know getting shut down a fair amount on both the Viper and his Marcy. I don't know. Maybe he just prefers to play the Doom. He might be uh, yeah have a bit of a better shot. I mean, he is a level 25 on this hero. He clearly spams mm -hmm. the hell out of it. Yes. So, it doesn't look like we're going to get any first blood. Both teams doing exactly the identical spread. Going to try and... Yeah, we might get a little bit of a contest for the uh, the river bounties. Just and obviously, we now. see Karma all melded up in underneath where the room will spawn. Just depends if anyone on the side of spawn actually does step out and fall into this trap. It's very good for a spawn that they have the clockwork opposite of the primal beast as well. Because clock is the only one who can actually keep him off of the rune without taking too much damage himself. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take cogs that early though? No, you do not. No, ideally, Bombi. Ooh, nice little sidestep there to avoid the LSA. Still takes quite a beating for it. Meanwhile, at the top, talking about taking a beating. Mamang die. One more hit is all they need to bring him down. And he does not get away. First blood gets picked up there for JG. And already, that's a really, really, uh, a really big lead to start there between these two mid laners. Yeah, that is pretty much the worst case scenario. Yeah, I mean, it's already close to 400 gold separating the two at 26 seconds into the game. That's uh, really, really rough. Yep, finished up a nice null talisman as well. And yeah. the next time the Scourier comes, it's just immediately going to have a bottle on it. Yeah, there's actually permanent uptime. I mean, sad news for the curry, though. I'm sure they'd like to have a little rest, sit back in the fountain and recharge. But no, nah, just going to have his little legs running non-stop by the looks in this melee. And a fantastic time. But talking about couriers, Bombi does actually able to uh, bring down Jitroy's courier, which is pretty damn massive. I mean, he's going to take a bit of harassment in response, but that is now the Lena with no HP and now no regen. Gonna need a uh, Traven to start handing over some of these uh, tangos. Maybe even give him the salve, but it feels kind of rough to do that now. Yeah, well, Lina does not want to be under tower. She takes so much damage from the creeps, and it makes her so vulnerable to anybody stepping on top of her. Unfortunately, though, for Rupido, he does not actually have a way to get on top of her just yet. No unsought available. No. Yeah. Just have to sit back. Meanwhile, Bombi just farming up a couple of the creeps under his own tier one tower, you know? A little bit of lane tax there for Rapido. Yep. As one does. Have you have you ever played a uh, a communist off lane? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I not intentionally, but <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it can't be helped. <laughs> yeah, accidentally. You know what you mean? Yeah, it's like especially if you're playing something like a keeper of the light, you're like, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to keep taking these creeps. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's After just... a while, they stop believing your stories, I've noticed. Yeah. And if they get really mad, that's when they start deleting items. But hey, that's just an easy report. 
that that sponsor from uh who who has that but will it follow the same thread one of the Xerxia players wait is it Rupido? for what no one of them has oh no it's karma actually karma has a a very interesting sponsor name and it made me think that he was all chatting something very <laughs> unsavory <laughs> <laughs> That's a long word as well. So I don't know what the hell they're meant to be sponsoring. Uh, they just got a load of asterisks and then Rapido just got all disease. But actually talking to Rapido, again on top of Jigroy, there is going to be the, uh, the the Cox there, making a bit of space, allows the lean to disengage, which is still really low. It looks like Travins will just be the sacrifice. Actually, Terja, they're deciding to ignore it. They want a much more high profile find of Jigcroy. They do find him into the trees. He's trying to get himself away, but it's just not going to work. He still falls. And now Travins, he actually just walks straight back into him. He's like, hey, you know, one kill wasn't enough. Have a second one. He's in real danger. He's able to avoid that last bramble, but you can't avoid the big fists of the primal beast. That is a pretty rough lane for Alina Clockwork. You should be able to start off without giving away any of these skills here. And now, Rupido might actually have enough uh, with that bracer to stand the onslaught of Alina for a while longer. Yeah, it's a pretty decent start for him. I mean, well, that was happening as well, Karma. Did he actually get taken down there at the top? So, you know, Spawn not losing all their lanes, been able to uh, put a bit of a stop there to the farming of the TA, which definitely helps balance it out a bit. Now how is this mid lane currently going? 19 and 3 to JG to the 11 and 1 there of Mamang Dyer. So yes. his Ember Spirit's really, really struggling. Well, there was a rotation from Bombi coming in there as well, but does actually decide to uh, change his mind, head back towards his lane. Yeah, Death Prophet just clowns on Ember. It's really. And there's, there's nothing you can do about it. Just hang on and, you know hope that eventually you get a really good rotation option on a side lane but as long as you're still locked in this laning stage nothing's going to improve your fate yeah just can't get any sort of space to secure those cs i get it here one here and there but definitely just going to be the death prophet show here in the mid unfortunately searin chains also latch onto the trick onto the creeps so jg just diving past the tier one tower gonna use his last spirit siphon got a charge as well for a crib swarm it's just such an easy uh, easy solo kill. There's nothing Mam and Dai could do. No. And his silence are currently... Well, the top one is not too pressured. The low's actually coming down here to uh, deny a rune. But that's about it. That rotation was still too late. The Doom can't really stand in lane solo. And never mind getting any help from a clockwork on bottom. If he does that, Jacroy immediately loses the lane. Yeah, 100%. It's so easy for a for a Dark Willow Primal Beast combination to get on top of her in a second. And yeah, that's, that's sort of just been that Mamang Dyer is kind of just the sacrifice here. Like, they have to just suck it up. They know he's going to have a rough time and just pray that the rest of the uh, the rest of the squad can start making some space for him. I mean, obviously, Red, as we were saying, needs to have the good start and he is currently off to a good one. Even actually now going back on towards Karma. They got the lockdown onto him, dealing a lot of damage. The TA's trying to run away. Getting underneath the tier one tower, but Red not feeling too pressure to run back, and just a quick little chain lightning to the back brings her down. Yep. Uh, Red really making good on his promise to at least do good on this top lane. He's going to go for the mech first. That's going to supply some uh, some necessary armor for him here as well. Versus the TA, very nice. Yeah, it's really good. And Well, yeah. Serge so able to find some more openings. Double kill for Rapido. Already a killing spree now for the old Primal Beast. And yeah, this man is having a really, really nice game. And talking about nice games, Red also getting a killing spree. So the offlane is really starting to pop off this game. Not even done yet. Karma's into danger yet again. Does just go invis. They don't have any detection. No AoE damage as well. It looks like Karma will yeah, die. Yeah, I would retreat into the jungle right about now. This is absolutely becoming untenable. Yeah, just can't get any space. Oh, in the mid lane as well. T1 Tower is already going to die. Six minutes in. <laughs> oh, these silence have just been so busy. Well, on top at least with winning, Karma is going to die. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. But on the bot lane with losing, that they couldn't do anything about this, uh, this push here. Yeah, it's, a, it's really like... It's hard to tell which team is actually ahead right now because, well, I, I suppose Zerja, they're winning two out of one lanes, right? So if you look at that, they are definitely ahead. 
But their TA is getting punished so, so hard now. Zero and three on her. And uh, I mean, doing okay in terms of CS, better than the Ember at least, but even still, Jikroy though is going to die another time. Oh, is he? Does manage to land a decent LSA, but now, nah, again, we Crown's going to deny the retreat. Death number three for her as well. Yeah, and I think I'd be cool with Karma having the, well, worst lane out of all of the cores because he is the one that's going to be in the jungle for the longest. It's the most effective jungle farmer out of their entire lineup as well. Mm -hmm. But he seems really intent on coming back to this top lane time and time again. Is not about to give up on it. He's going to try and do it, but it looks like Zha Zha, though, unfortunately, going to get caught out right now. Just going to get chased down, the dot damage, another pick off there for red. But he, um, Zha Zha was actually focused on his illusions, getting stacks elsewhere on the map, so maybe he just wasn't a bit too keen on his uh, position there, which is why he died. Quite unfortunate for him. Yep, uh, now Karma, please, please leave while you can. Jacroy is here. Jacroy has decided his lane is untenable, and he's making sure that he gets the space elsewhere. Yeah, definitely a good read to just back it up. Ooh, to lol. Nearly run straight into him there. That was so, so close. And that would have mm -hmm. been 100% another death there for the uh, TA. I, I should, Absolutely. Sure, I'm kind of surprised that they don't have more detection here on the side of spawn. Like, a couple of dusts. Like, versus a TA. You should really just have one already. Yeah, I mean, they've been making use of just the burn of the scorched earth to bring her down so far. Hmm. It has been working for this point. Doom drop the bot. Yeah, trying to run down Rapido, and that he can. This red is having such a good start. Looks like the dot's going to be enough. No one's even going to be in the vicinity to try and get a deny off. And now potentially Bombi's in some real danger right now. Travis beating into him, but JG charging on over, trying to make the space. Got to be careful the red doesn't get caught out. They've committed the EXO. Oh, red, he just gets clipped by one of those brambles. So hard and, appeal. and now he's forced to stand his ground, but he does not last long. So that's both of the killing sprees of the off laners but getting taken away <laughs> big chunk of gold absolutely and that means that jg puts another exorcism onto a tower yeah see if he's going to be able to bring it down when this second i mean how much how long has he got left yes. just over half the duration uh mm -hmm. if you were spawned do you want to bring people down to defend it or are you just happy to let it go at this point <laughs> Uh, I mean, you have Jacroy, I suppose, but your clockwork does not have six. I don't really see how you get him in position for for like a good fight here. And I'd also kind of doubt that the Ember wants anything to do with that, because the Death Prophet could already have a point in silence here. It's unlikely, but it's possible. Mm. And as an Ember, I think you're really rather happy that you're just getting a little bit of space here. I I doubt you're going to death. Yeah, just going to sack it off. In which case, it's pretty... Decent there for Zerja that we um, potentially two tier one towers dropping sub 10 minutes in. Which is exactly what I mean. we've seen a lot of death profits in the past of this tournament. And a lot of them have never really been able to, you know, achieve those objectives. It only takes like three or four exos to take down one tower. But really just showing that uh, JG is just dominating on this hero right now. And he is going to have to do it solo as well because Bram will just keep it top. Oh. Okay, well, looks like they want to try and get on top of Jigroy, and you can see why he wants to get away. Easy peasy kill. Uh, I think Karma was desperate to get it. I think he saved the uh, the meld strike for the final touch, but just <laughs> didn't actually time it correctly in Rapido. Grabbing another one for himself. Yep, Blows now half HP on that bottom tower. Xerxia is winning everywhere on the map currently. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm kind of surprised the net worth lead doesn't, you know, represent that it's still less than one kick on advantage oh yeah very very true he always forget about the doom and his inflated gold i uh i love having games with like dooms and alchemists in it because that question comes up every single time and you can just like oh, nah. <laughs> it the doesn't matter one. if they're not actually the biggest part of it it always counts it does it's just like one of the first dooms in a long time that i've seen that hasn't gone for the hand of Midas first like so many of us are really greedy but Playing the more team-based game. Meanwhile, though, in the river, Clockwork's dead. And Mamang Tire quickly follows. My lord, that damage has come flying through in seconds. It dropped. There's a point in silence as well from JG. He's having a whale of a time right now. Yeah, this Death Prophet really feels unanswered. She's just able to run around from lane to lane, doing all the work that she needs. And She's uh, getting a Witchblade as well. That's how you know that a, a mid Death Prophet feels really good. Like a BKB rush? What BKB rush? I was going to get my damage in. Yeah. And it definitely makes sense this game because 
what could spawn team really do to stop? I, I suppose if they like, you know, land a good hook shot into Bushwhack, Sharpshooter, Laguna Blade as well, they probably can bring her down, but that is a lot to commit. And then whilst that's going on, the rest of Zerja will just be, you know, dismantling your backline. So yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough, tough situation to be in here for spawn. I, I don't even know why JG had to show bottom, frankly. Like, you just sit nearby if you really think that they're going to put up a TP defense. Yeah. Maybe he thought you'd get assists if he, like, touches the tower in the last few seconds. I was like, yeah, a bit of bonus gold. <laughs> Efficiency. That's what it's all about. Look at a spawn. They were trying to invade the dire jungle there, but fortunately enough for the Primal Beast, they had the ward down, seized the move, and uh, easily able to evade that one. And meanwhile, on the other side, Zerja taking control of the Radiant Jungle. They might actually be able to bump into him. Mamadai does get the Searing Chains off there onto Charger, which gets stored away. But nice two man bushwhack land. Oh, the Sharpshooter actually just about misses there. He was trying to graze the Rubik, but doesn't hit anything at all. Oh, with the oh well, I thought that was uh, Mamadai's <laughs> boots as well that just died there. That would have been really, really bad. Oh, yeah, that would have been awful. Instead, he just loses about half his HP to a Death Prophet who's just sort of like taunting him sitting on the opposite bank of from her own base and there's you need to commit so many years to do anything about her and really any spawn just really wants to get the farm up on their own side yeah trying their best to hey, anything they can trap and like i will steal away this rune oh it's not even there and then he just dies Ends up speaking out. Yeah, a little bit more food there for the death profit machine and I think they, yeah, they did see red as well. Rapido charging for us. They want to try to get the lockdown onto this guy and bring him to his knees if they possibly can. And they will do. Just no way to escape. And the Doom, even though he is the most farmed on the side of spawn, he's, even he's just easy pickings. He is, yeah. Especially because he didn't actually go Midas into BKB. It means that this combination, as soon as they get on top of him, the Bedlam absolutely destroys him. Yeah, he's a nasty amount of damage for such a simple ability. Oh, it's a Mama and Daya trying to do something poking onto Bombi right now, but he's like, oh, hmm, maybe it's not actually worth the risk. Especially seems like JG was still in the general vicinity. And they just have to fall back. But now 13 minutes, 5k gold advantage now for Zerja. Sat a pretty comfortable 85% win probably. And I think that is uh, pretty damn correct. Ooh, nice sharpshooter though. Does secure a kill onto Bombi at the very least. JG. You'll have to take what you want. Finds Chick Roy. Does get hit by the Doom, though. I think that's just a defensive Doom. Not sure if they can actually get the kill, especially seeing himself. Jarjo is also here. No. Nope. Just throws him back, and yeah, JG's just going to be able to walk this <laughs> off. Actually, he's about to run out, and he's thinking about turning around. Feeling pretty ambitious. Yeah. As a nice tanky Doom, you get a, a long duration Spirit Siphon out of that. Yeah, it's such a. Such a annoying hero to try and deal with like it feels like you have to commit so much just to bring her down but sometimes it just doesn't even feel worth it absolutely not i mean you need to burst you need to get in a laguna blade mm. oh and jacroy he's been levering the light strike array as well so not even points into the dragon slave which is really the wrong way around to do it as far as i'm concerned yeah is that mainly just to you know avoid the steals from the rubik or yeah. just to actually help his own game out so you do take like you do take the dragon slave because it's just more damage it's bigger aoe you hit more people with it means more fiery soul charges mm -hmm. the light striker range is just smaller and harder to hit and the rubik has more benefit from it so i'm i feel like he he heard about the theory but doesn't actually know i i'm not sure what's happening there yeah maybe a little bit of a mistake in the skill wise could make a big difference but Roshan being attacked now from Zerja's side Travis does scout it out with the rocket and he's looking to see if he can get a jump and steal and if he possibly can but the rest of the team gonna make the space charge through even Terrorize landing onto the most of them fantastically placed Mamma is trying to get himself away able to get a zip off with the remnant and he is away even Travis TP in okay so neither of them die but regardless it was all about making space to allow their team to uh, actually steal the uh, or just get the Aegis Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. and now Karma's feeling pretty good about himself. He had a rough lane, had to move into the jungle without as much farm as he possibly would have wanted, but you know, he is the best jungler on our team and he has crawled himself way back to the top of the net where Scott the Desolator will 
put the blink dagger in his pocket pretty much momentarily. And he has the Aegis now as well. It's uh, it's time to take some more towers. Yes. Oh, I, don't, I don't even know. What, what is the, like, the sequence of plays that Spawn can make to help actually balance this game out? Because it just, minute by minute, it's just getting worse and worse for him. Like, what can they actually Oh, this do? might be it. Oh, yeah. Dropped a Doom on JG. Sharpshoot also I landed. Don't damage. But he's managed Again. to get back to the safety of his team. The heal's also coming in. And JG is gone. And uh, maybe to low and uh, red in some real dangerous situations, especially as the Primal Beast come charging. He wants to get involved. Easy finish onto the Doom. And to low, the little squirrel legs trying to scurry away. And uh, yeah, it does make it to the safety of the trees. But again, it's a failed gank. It is, and I completely agree that if you want to have a good fight here, JG is probably the one that you have to take down. Because of the exorcism, because of the way that he can stand in the middle of the fight and tank. He doesn't really need to do anything else apart from being alive. So if you can make him dead, that would be nice. But yeah, that's exactly the problem. He will not be dead unless you commit everything into him. And especially, I'm going to bring it up again, but it's that Laguna Blade. And yeah. Chikroy is just not in a position where he can join to throw that out. That's true. He's really focused on trying to recover his own farm. And oh, well, Javins was about to TP to his death then, but he wisely cancels. And Delol just trying to drag the creeps and defend his tier 2, which he, uh, he will successfully do. But yeah, as you say, Jigroy is, he is starting to recover his farm. Um, still about a thousand gold behind that of the TA. But, you know, he, he hasn't actually been punished in quite a while. He, he is finding what he can. Ah, uh, Rupido taking a kill on bottom. That was unnecessary. Bombi had that. <laughs> uh, that's the thing about cause. If there's a kill, they want it. That's all they care about. So now this Death Prophet is going to have a BKB at a very respectable timing on top of the Witchblade, on top of the Falcon Blade. JG is a monster. Yeah, this is an uh, extremely scary Death Prophet. It just runs into Travins, but he's able to get away. Runs into the Bramble Brambles, though. Not sure if they actually got the full chase. And actually, with Jarja, they obviously Telekinesis is dragging him back in. There's another pickoff. And, uh, hey, a restore! Isn't the TA is. just gonna love that? That is pretty damn big. Even if she didn't need more damage, it's always gonna be a nice little help. But yeah, also take down tier two at 18 minutes in. It's now an 8,000 gold lead. And prim uh, win probability as well at 90%. To be honest, I, mm -hmm. I, I think that's even kind of generous there to a spawn team. I, I should be more inclined to say like 95, something like that. Just feels like they need a miracle to flip this game. Yeah, I, I do think they do. I mean, the Ember Spirit will have a BKB pretty soon, which will actually enable him to fight into the roots and the silence is coming out from Xerxia. And you are defending Hyde with Alina, who is also just now finishing her BKB. Mm -hmm. So, a bad high ground fight from Xerxia could definitely put Spawn at least in a contesting kind of mood again. But any fights outside of the base, I do not see them winning. Yeah, this is uh, going to be Turtle Gaming at its finest. Meanwhile, it looks like they have just got a grab here on towards the Ember Spirit. Terrorized Brambles, all set up to the uh, Yule Scepter. Yeah. They bring him down. Maybe they can actually take down Rapido. Drop all the spells. The bush Stole actually Laguna. misses. Stole Laguna. Can they get the burst down? Obviously, Jinkoi with his BKB. He's safe for now. Sharpshoot does land onto JG. But Zha Zha, he's waiting for the perfect opportunity to drop this spell down. Karma taking a bit of bullying, but he has the Aegis. He's not even too careful about that. <laughs> there is the Laguna. Kind of unnecessary. I think, uh, I think the leader was dead anyway, but it doesn't matter. They get the kill. Red TP's into his death. Can't really accomplish that much. Didn't even get a chance to use his ultimate. And that is four deaths there for spawn. They don't get it. Well, I suppose they got the Aegis, but uh, that's very, very minor. Uh, yeah, at least I got decent use out of that Lina BKB, but she just doesn't get to focus anybody down because none of her other heroes can stand their ground. Yeah, it was sort of like her versus the world. And you can just see, like, Zha Zha, he had the clockwork on him the entire time. But you could just tell his cursor was hovering over the leader, just like, I want a burster, I want to mm -hmm. use this Laguna Blade, I don't care about anything else. I have so much range, what are you going to do about me? <laughs> this really, it seems like 60 seconds is a really short cooldown for it, but yeah, going to have it up again momentarily and just going to look to see if they can find another hero to burst down with this. And uh, yeah, Zerja, now 12,000 gold leads. We do see a four-man smoke play coming out here from spawn. Let's see if they're able to get anything out of it or not. 
And it well. has to be Travens catching somebody. Anything else is not going to work. I suppose it's the TA it has to be the primary target. So I don't even think they can bring down JG now. He just feels nearly unkillable. Bombi is just going to be able to walk away right now. The space from Rapido actually charges forwards, avoids the pushback. They got the connection. There is that Laguna Blade again. Charger blowing up red. And now Spawn are like, all right, we've been off more than we could shoot. We've got to get ourselves out before we lose any more. And it looks like sure. Fish should be able to. There's your aura carrier just absolutely deleted because he has to wear too many hats. He also needs to be the one to walk in. Bearing the full brunt of the damage while maybe you're... Well, oh no, uh, you cry. No, 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 no. Uh, he was able to get the BKB off, but Karma's like, I don't really care about that. I just do so much physical damage. I just destroyed them and... Oh, I don't know. This this is just really, really rough game here for Spawn. 14,000 gold behind. Like, their Doom only got 8.7k, which for a Doom is probably closer to 7,000. So, yeah, this is... Uh, I don't know. I don't even know what else to say. It's just Spawn really, really needs to start having some of their uh, prayers answered to start flipping this game. Absolutely. And they just, they have no space to move into because they only have that top tower down and literally nothing else. You can't really suicide from mid just yet at this point in the game. You'll probably lose too many heroes for that anyway. BKB on Ember Spirit. 40 gold, he's just gonna wait it out. Does he get any of those creeps? Nope. <laughs> Oh, he's going to be forced into a fight before he can complete it right now. Chick Roy just vanishes. Oh my god, JG just charging as well. They've got Telekinesis grab onto the Ember Spirit. Lockdown from no. the Pulverus as well. It's just going to set back his uh, BKB even further. And that, that was their mid and carry. And they just did... They, well, they couldn't do anything. No, they just sort of fell over. I... I don't know, man. I feel like I'm standing in a slaughterhouse watching uh, like a pig get taken apart. I'm like, yeah, um, can I can I leave now? Can I stop? And the pig is like, no, no, I might win yet. <laughs> Stay. Oh, like... Spawn, spawn, please free all of us. <laughs> all right, we will see how the sausage is made. It is not good. <laughs> oh, no. Well, next Roshan, a minute and 40 away, but... I really don't think Xertia care about that at all. They do not need it. Like they're just so far ahead that it's just really like a small bonus. They could probably they could probably just give it to the Rubik or something at this point for how much it'll actually uh, matter in this game. Yeah, I mean that's that's how you you know one one in a hundred times that goes wrong. So maybe yeah. maybe not. But oh, actually, Gabe says it's a hundred percent chance. A hundred percent. That's pretty rare. That is, uh... Oh wait, no, it's back down to 99. <gasps> oh. That shouldn't oh. be possible. That should that should not okay, be so possible. Okay, so the 1% one, the, the 1 chance is, um... I think you just get one of the supports right off the bat. Ideally, Jaja, but he's not in that position right now at all. Um, and then for some reason... JG chases after your Doom who has already dropped it on another hero and just leaves leaves somewhere through the back and then you fight the rest of them. Oh, Peter. oh That's the not shot. it. No, this is a terrible way for it to start. They even commit the Doom on towards the Primal Beast. They might be able to bring him down. JG is amongst them all. Try to make space for his offlaner, but it's not going to matter. He will still die. But in the back lines, Jikra is dead as well as Delol. And Red just slowly getting ran down from JG. Does actually do a nice move of uh, pushing himself up to the high ground there. He will be able to get away. Man, Man Dyer taking a beat in. Gets one zip off. Gui Crown getting the stun. Jesus, man, that first damage. Uh, uh, GG is cool. Spawn. They, they just tap out. Okay, maybe the 100% was right. <laughs> yeah, and I am very thankful to them for freeing us all for this... Uh... Yeah, this rough spot because it was certainly not enjoyable anymore and it hadn't been enjoyable for a while, at least of all for them. Yeah. But, you know, you, you got to believe, right? You got handed the Lina, you got handed like all of this damage and all of this range and you want to really make sure that Xerxia is not going to give you the space for it. And when they try it here for the final time, it's like, nope, no, there's actually no way. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, he's just the end scores as well. Jitkroy is zero and eight. Mamang Dyer zero and six. It was, I mean, like we were saying at the start, Red needed to be the one to make the space for them. He did do a good job in the laning phase, but it, they just couldn't actually translate that into anything else. And yeah, it just, just seemed like the Zerja show. They just ran over him. Yeah. And I, I think his itemization was uh, part of his mistakes, right? Because normally you'd say, right, fine, this is a, a Doom who's going with uh, Aura item base. So he is going to non-greedy, right? But the problem is that nobody was going to join him. And what what do you build Auras for if you're the only one going forward anyway? Like, you need your BKB, you need your Blink. Um, and hope that you can keep on getting kills together with your supports. Because neither of your other cores are going to join you. And that is where the Aura items really start to make a difference. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, unfortunately, just couldn't make as much of a difference as they would have hoped. So we did see a couple of times that Red and Delol were trying their best to get their pick offs, like really all they could do. But again and again, I think they went on Jaja, uh, Zha -Zha, like, no Jaja, sorry, um, JG, like two or three times. They landed the Doom, they hit him with the Sharpshoot, but he was just so damn tanky. He was just able to walk it off again and again. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Not much else we could say after that game number one, as, yeah, Spawn team just got absolutely dismantled. So now. We were saying earlier that they had to win one game out of four to guarantee that they went through. Now they've got to win one out of one. <laughs> one, one out of one. One out of one to guarantee it. But talking about guarantees, actually, no, I think they are. Wait, are they, oh, no, actually, they are already guaranteed to go through um, through the group stages. Obviously, Zerja, 100% uh, the top. Then Polaris, mm -hmm. Spawn, and Ehome. So I suppose, actually, at this point, it doesn't actually matter whether if they lose this. It's all for show, all for practice at the end of the day. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what they're able to do. Is, is there any sort of key changes they can make going into this second game versus Zerja though? Okay, get Mamang Daya, Playmaker, and also a lane. Like, my <laughs> list of desires for Mamang Daya just keeps on getting longer. Please, I want to like, just one game of Mamang Daya doing his thing, okay? This man's having such a bad time. He really is. Just two games, well, three games in a row now that he's just not been able to perform at all how he would like. And yeah, that is very unfortunate. But obviously, that is game number one down, guys. Game number two will be up in about 10 minutes' time. So not long to wait for some more Dota 2. So stick around. <laughs> 